five points about Helicobacter, you tell me confidently, I am very happy. What are they? Curved spiral organism. Corkscrew motility is not only there for treponema. Even Helicobacter also know how to corkscrew. And it corkscrews not due to endoflagellae of it like treponema. Rather, it corkscrews due to multiple polar flagellae is what you have to ultimately remember. So, this is uh, the typical polar flagellae and the corkscrew movement of the helicobacter which need to be remembered. Helicobacter is called microaerophilic organism. One of the favorite questions which is asked um, uh, by the <coughs> examiner. That means, what does it mean? What is microaerophilic versus uh, it requires some special conditions for it to grow, being microaerophilic. It uh, produces urease and uh, it leads to gastric ulcer, duodenal ulcer, gastritis, and another speciality. In spite of a low pH of the stomach, it can still be able to live, love, produce grandchildren inside the stomach itself. Why? Because it has that ammonia, urea splitting, ammonia releasing, alkaline pH creating mechanism given by God. Urease makes it to survive in a acidic environment because around it, it will create a little alkaline environment and sit inside it. So, that is what uh, it will be able to do. Then, uh, transmission is not through food or water, but person to person, because it is not isolated in uh, food or water. And if you don't treat it properly, lifelong infections will be there. So, where will it uh, stay? Where it allows to stay? Mucosal epithelial cells of the stomach and also Metaplastic gastric epithelium, it can be able to stay in the duodenum. In the duodenum, when continuous acidic injury is happening at one point of time, duodenum will think, what is this acid burn? And it will convert into a metaplastic epithelium. There it can live. It can live in esophagus also, where there is a reflux. A acid uh, injury lead to metaplastic esophageal epithelium. There are all the places where it loves to live. But it cannot live in intestine. It can't live in intestine. And uh, it leads to a chronic inflammation ultimately. Now comes a very important question. Will it do any dirty job of invading cells, drilling into them, entering into them, slicing them? No, sir. It is non invasive in nature. It is non invasive in nature. So, this is a typical endoscopic view. Tomorrow, Prasad will become a top uh, consultant gastroenterologist of Twin Cities. Every day morning, one tube will be ready. Already, nurse will put inside the mouth of patient and just he need to peep and say, oh, this, uh, all right, get a urease biopsy. He will take it out and send a sample and give a triple therapy, quadruple therapy. So, doctor, endoscopic appearance of that uh, metaplastic epithelium due to chronic gastritis induced by the helicobacter pylori. So, that urease will split the urea, produce ammonia, alkaline pH and try to create an alkaline environment around it and it can survive the acidic uh, situation. Then, it does not invade H. pylori. Then, how is it causing injury? Cytotoxin it produces. Cytotoxin is produced by the H. pylori. And this urease enzyme which is leading to urea splitting leading to ammonia, that ammonia and this cytotoxin together are very damaging to the, the gastric cells. So, which type of ulcer will form? Not only gastric, duodenal ulcer also is due to the H. pylori. H. pylori is also a risk factor for gastric carcinoma, gastric B cell lymphoma, especially a type of lymphoma called Myeltoma, mucosa associated lymphoid tumor. 
H. pylori is implicated. So once more tomorrow Prasad as an eminent gastroenterologist is going to film this uh, maltoma. Right doctor? Maltoma. So this is in summary the pathogenic ability. High levels of acid production are there. Um, and uh, the normal gastric mucosa acutely it infects then it becomes chronic. After it becomes chronic it leads to a antral predominant gastritis and ultimately duodenal ulcer. It leads to a non-atrophic pan gastritis and a corpus predominant at atrophic gastritis and uh, ultimately gastric ulcer, intestinal metaplasia and gastric cancer. And also this non-atrophic pan gastritis predisposes to maltoma. So this is how the H. pylori will be basically living. So what are the chances of each of these complications? Of all the consequences, acute and chronic gastritis, 100% of situations it is going to develop in a patient with H. pylori. Maltoma chance is about less than 1%, 10% chances of gastric ulcer and 1% uh, chance of gastric cancer, right doctor? So lot of times our patients say, I am a very nice person doctor, I never injured any human being, I never harmed anybody, how come after Prasad did endoscopy I am found to have gastric cancer? Already H. pylori was asymptomatically living in him for long period of time, right doctor? So uh, it can lead to 1 in 100 people who are infected can develop gastric cancer. So doctor, um, uh, this is a typical microscopic view, microscopically if you take uh, a biopsy sample and look through microscope. Then you can see this uh, Helicobacter pylori, forma shaped organisms is what you can be able to classically see. Okay, doctor. Now, uh, uh, this once more to say Helicobacter and uh, the development of gastric ulcer. Now, doctor comes laboratory. How will you evaluate? How will you discover? It? How will you prove it and treat it? We have non invasive diagnostic tests where you can be able to do ELISA to know the antibodies against the H. pylori, one method. You can do a breath test for urea, so urea enzyme. So how will you do it? You will give a radioactive labeled urea by mouth. If H. pylori is there, it will break it down and that radio labeled carbon dioxide will be breathed out from the stomach into the esophagus, into the nasopharynx, into the because one of our friends argued, in stomach if organism is there, how will from the breath the car, radio label carbon will come? We need to make him sit, explain nasopharynx, oropharynx, kaiser hega, and from there will that come out. So they were all happy days. You bet, you fight. You used to have a crowd of ignorant classmates around you. You also are a super ignorant. Sometimes some better classmates used to correct you. That's called the fun of preparing in medical school, doctor. Nowhere else there is such a fun. Once you become consultant, if you do a blunder, you should first shut down and then close the evidence and then not let anybody else to know. You will be fearing, not for the God, but the soul that you have just before killed on the operation table. So as a medical student, life is a breeze, right? So enjoy this part of life. Invasive test. So, gastric biopsy specimens taken from endoscopy, and uh, even on that, also you can conduct a urease test and can be able to detect the presence of the urease. So, that is all the story of what we call as H. pylori, doctor. <clears throat> now, doctor, uh, shall we? It is still not 8 o'clock. So, 8 o'clock is our upper limit of tolerance now. 